Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The Department of Mineral Resources and Energy hosted a nuclear summit this week, following the recent withdrawal of a determination for the procurement of 2.5 gigawatts of new nuclear capacity. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss some of the issues raised. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. The summit and the procurement determination were not directly linked, but the issue was still raised. Yes, um, <coughs> the summit was really about promoting nuclear and having a discussion around nuclear, both its electricity uses, which we know very well, as well as its non-electricity uses, so sort of medical isotopes being the main one in South Africa. We are a big producer of medical isotopes. So it was really to look at the technology, expose the country to it in some ways, and it had the existing nuclear industry there. So from Kuburg power station operators, that's Eskom, through to Nexa, Timber Labs, you know, so quite a few people in the, the value chain. Uh, but it comes against the backdrop, as you say, of this withdrawal of the nuclear procurement determination, which was only actually gazetted in January this year by Minister Ramakhopa. I think uh, th there was a, it was clear to him that once he saw the court cases that arose from the Democratic Alliance and the um, environmental groups, that he was on a losing wicket and he was going to lose the court case. And it was basically came down to whether the, uh, the, uh, the public consultation process uh, to get the regulators' um, a concurrence with the determination uh, had been done properly and whether there had been sufficient public consultation and it was clear that there had been none. So he withdrew that hastily uh, on, in August with the uh, looming court cases coming up in October. So and the, the view is then that they're going sort of back to the drawing board to try and have a, a proper and more credible public procurement process around a future determination. There's still a low degree of trust in South Africa's nuclear plans. Yeah, and I think it's on two levels. So the low degree of trust in society as a whole, not just environmental low degree of trust because of you know the, the perceived dangers of nuclear, even though we've had nuclear operating in South Africa for many, many years. Down in Kuburg, it's been operating for 40 years. It's just got a life extension on the one unit for another 20 years. So we, ha we have a pedigree in nuclear. We also have the um, Safari reactor in Pelindaba producing the medical isotopes. So we have this long pedigree. We also were the only country to, you know, voluntarily dismantle our military, uh, our military um, uh, nuclear arms, and that was a major um, development worldwide. No one else has done that, and in the world that we're going into now, with the geop geopolitical tensions are. It's unlikely anyone will do that again. So it was a major feather in South Africa's cap that we were able to do that. So we do have this uh, nuclear pedigree, but in the more recent times, so since about 2008 and then again in 2013, uh, there's been major resistance to procuring your nuclear. And I think the key thing is that, you know, th there's the affordability case was never made. It seems it was tainted in all sorts of allegations of malfeasance, corruption, uh, you know, ministers were fired over this issue. There was a geopolitical intrigue around the relationship we're developing with Vladimir Putin. So there's a low degree of societal trust, let alone the concerns about nuclear safety. But there's also a low degree of trust that we can procure this. You know, one, you know, we've had two attempts, two failed attempts, and on very rational grounds, we just can't afford it. So you know, so and also the so the vendors that would we want to partner with, they always show eagerness, but th they they also are somewhat jaded, and are not sure that South Africa is really ready to procure new nuclear, at a at a sort of 2.5 gigawatts. It's a much smaller, and if we go back to the RP 2010 when we were looking at 9.6 gigawatts of nuclear, but the world has changed under nuclear's feet, uh, and uh, you know new technologies have come in. And South Africa has to weigh this, this big issue that's ho overhanging nuclear is affordability. What are the likely next steps? <coughs> well, the ministers uh, said that he's going to set up this expert panel, which is going to advise him on those likely next steps. Does, uh, as it, does it make sense in terms of the current RP to move ahead at some sort of pace and scale that South Africa can afford? What is that pace and scale? Where would it fit in? 
what technologies could be could be used, what procurement framework should be used, should we move ahead. So there's going to be this expert panel, it hasn't been assembled, I think it's going to be assembled quite soon. And I think uh, there's definitely a champing at the bit at the DMRE to try and get the determination process going again, you know. So getting a determination back in front of NERSA and allowing NERSA to go through the public participation process to get full concurrence. Because I think there's going to be no credibility around any procurement unless it's done in a very transparent and, and very uh, democratic way. There's a lot of mistrust, as I say. So I think those are the next steps. That's where we are. Um, and we, the, the, the sort of analysis has to be done, a techno-economic analysis of where this uh, fits in and can it fit in. Is nuclear procurement likely to proceed? <coughs> well, there seems to be a strong determination within government to proceed. But we've seen the story before. <laughs> it's deja vu all over again. And it, it, the techno-economic case, as I say, needs to be made for nuclear, especially in the changing market and given South Africa's advantages around renewable energy. So does it fit into that system? If we were replacing like for like a, a coal-fired power station with the next and, and the next cheapest and cleanest was nuclear, then it would make sense. So that would have been the old world. But we're entering a new world where the cheapest electrons are going to come from uh, wind and solar. Those are we know are variable. So what you need is gap fillers, not big rectangular blocks of base load supply. So, so, and I know there's a lot of talk about nuclear being able to load follow in other countries, but that's not what it's made for. You know, to be economic, nuclear either has to be on or off, has to operate at a high capacity factor uh, and needs to have a, an EAF way above 80% to be economically viable. So it's not a really a load following technology. It's not a, a flexible technology where you can fill the gaps. So the cheap electricity coming in, there's gaps now because it's a wind still night. So there's no solar, there's no wind. How are we going to fill that gap? Nuclear is not ideal. It doesn't respond quickly. Uh, get things like gas to power wood, uh, battery energy storage is going to play a major role. So, and, and then obviously pumped hydro, which we've already got in our system. So that makes the most sense in the future system. So you have to prove why do you want to bring in this very expensive, ultimately imported technology, even though there's talk about reviving uh, the, the PBMR, on fuel that we don't have a fuel cycle anymore, and fuel that will also be imported. I mean, it doesn't really make sense. Why make the consumer pay for this? So unless the case can be made for nuclear, it really looks like a case of a square peg for a round hole, given South Africa's natural advantages around renewable energy, which is going to be the cheapest electricity. It's got the wind, it's got the sun, and it's got the land. So some countries don't have that, and they need to look at nuclear. I'm not saying nuclear is not part of the decarbonization net zero trajectory. For, for some countries, it definitely is. But for South Africa, it doesn't quite make sense, and the case for nuclear has not been made rationally in that sense, the techno-economic case. So while the minister says that the resistance is frivolous and uninformed, I think that the minister also has to see from the industry whether they can make a, a, a case for new nuclear, probably at a large chunk because the SMRs, that people talk about the small modular reactors, are not licensed to be, to be put into other countries. They are operating in certain jurisdictions, but they're not, being, they're not commercial. So we're looking at really PWRs, pressure water reactors, which is these are large pieces of equipment, totally inflexible. How does that fit in? Why should South Africans pay more for nuclear? And I think that until that case is made, I think nuclear is going to be on the back foot. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.